so now that we've got our basic project open in our Visual Studio IDE, let's start off by adding some basic controls to the page. And before we do that, let's just take a quick look through the source code to see what it is that we've got here. So right at the top, you can see that there's a phone application page control. And I talked about that a little bit earlier. And the phone application page control is what contains all the content of the page that you're laying out for the phone. And your application can contain as many of these pages as it needs. In this case, we're looking at the main page.xaml one right here. So as we scroll down through the content, you can see that in the XAML code for the layout, we have a series of controls that have been created for us by default. There's the main layout grid, which is what contains all of the content for the page. You can see that when I select it, it gets highlighted. And then within that grid, there are two other grids. There's one called the title grid, and that contains the text blocks for our titles. And then there's the other one, which is the content grid, and that contains all the page content. Now, I just want to quickly note, you don't really need to keep the title grid if you don't want it, or the other content grid. It's really up to you what goes in the layout root grid. That's the one that contains everything. So if I really wanted to, I could just go ahead and just delete these guys, right? I'll just cut them out, and you can see that they disappear from the layout, and I can put whatever I want in there. But for the purposes of this example, let's go ahead and leave them in. So while we're at it, let's change the names of the text blocks. We're going to call this basic controls demo and then we'll also name the page instead of my first page. Let's just call it basic controls. So you can see that after I've typed in the changes in the XAML, the layout surface over here has updated. So we'll go ahead and save that. And now what we're going to do is open up our toolbox. So the toolbox you can see is now populated with all the controls that are available to us as a Windows Phone Silverlight application. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this window open so I can keep it open and just drag things out of it. And we'll just move this over a little bit to make it a little easy to read. So let's go ahead and start putting some controls on the page. What we're going to do in this example is put some controls on the page and then wire them up to event handlers and have the event handler show some UI feedback to show us that something interesting is going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull out one of the most basic of all the control types, and that of course is a button. Just click on that and drag them right out. You can see that when I drop the button on the design surface, a couple of things happen. First, there's some layout adornments that have been added around the button, and it's been dropped with a default size and content. So as I click on this button and move it around, you can see that as I'm doing that, the layout surface is giving me some hints as to where to put it. So it's snapping my control to various snap points which are predefined in the Windows Phone user interface guidelines. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that button there. Okay, let's go ahead and drag some other ones out while we're at it. Let's get ourselves a checkbox. Checkbox, and we'll make sure these guys line up. What else should we use? How about a hyperlink button? Drag the hyperlink button out, line that up. Get ourselves a list box. Now list boxes, when they're added, they don't by default contain any content. So we're going to have to put some content in there. And I'm just going to drop it here on the design surface. Size it so it snaps to the right size. So this is an opportunity for me to now go and use the properties window to add some content. So make sure the list box is selected, which it is. So over here in the properties window, I'm going to click on the properties and we'll scroll down a little bit. You can see that there's an item here called items. And this is where the list box items get entered and it's a collection. So I'm going to click on that little ellipsis button and I'm going to go ahead and add some list box items. So we'll add, let's just say four. And we'll give each one a name. List box item one. And this guy will be list box item two. And this one, list box item three. And this one we'll call list box item four. So now I've added some list box items. Let's continue on. How about we drag out some radio buttons? There's a radio button right here. In fact, let's drag out two radio buttons because they're kind of useless unless there's more than one. 
So for radio buttons, they need to be in the same grouping in order to have the correct toggling behavior work. So what I'm going to do is select this radio button, and then in the properties window, I'm going to scroll down to the is checked and make it checked. And then over here in the group name field, I'm going to give it a group. I'll just call it GRP1. And I need to do the same thing with the other radio button. This is very similar to how web pages work, too. So now that they're both in the same group, they'll know to toggle each other on and off. All right, what else should we use? How about a slider? Grab a slider control out here. And let's see, what else should we use? How about a toggle control switch right there? And then finally, we need to have a piece of UI that's going to show us that things are actually happening when we operate these controls. So how about a progress bar? So we'll bring the progress bar out, and we'll line him up right over here. All right, looks good. Okay, so now that I've got all the controls on the design surface, what I need to do now is create the event handlers. So I'll do that by selecting the button or the control I want to create the event handler for. And then back over here in the properties window, in addition to the properties tab, there's also an events tab. So when I click on the events tab, you'll see that all the events that are relevant to that control are listed here. And the one highlighted in blue is the event that is most likely the one that you're interested in for that particular control. Visual Studio is guessing that buttons get clicked a lot and therefore it's going to highlight the click event. And in this case it's right, so I'm going to go ahead and type on click. Okay, so now that we have our controls laid out on the design surface, we're going to wire up some events to them. So what I'm going to do is select the item that I want to add an event for, in this case the button. And then over in the properties window, you see that there's a list of all the properties that are relevant to the control, but there's also an events tab. And when I click the events tab, you'll see that there's a list of relevant events for that control. And the one that's highlighted is the one that Visual Studio has guessed is the most relevant for the control type you have selected, in this case, a button. Visual Studio assumes that buttons tend to get clicked, and so therefore it highlights the click event. So I'm going to go ahead and type in on click here. And when I do that, it's going to add the on click event to the button, and it's going to switch me over to the code view for this page. So here in the Solution Explorer, you can see that there's the XAML page, and then there's the associated C-sharp code page that goes with that layout. So it's added an on-click event for me. Now, for the on-click event, we want to update the UI so that we can see that things are happening. And what we're going to do is just change the value of that progress bar to slowly increment over time. So we're going to do that by writing our own method called private void, and we'll call it update progress. And update progress will do a couple things. So first of all, progress bars have a number which represents the percentage of their current progress, and that is stored as a double. So we'll name our variable double prog value, and we will set that to the value of progress bar. You can see that as I'm typing, Visual Studio's IntelliSense is helping me choose which control I'm talking about. So there's progress bar one right there. So I'll select that, progress bar one dot value. And what we're going to do is increment the value of prog value by 10%. Now, we don't want this to overflow and just keep going on forever. So what we're going to do is check to see if prog value is greater than 100, then we're going to set prog value back to zero. The progress bar will basically just keep going over and over and over again. And then finally, we're going to set the progress bar 1's value property equal to the updated value. Okay, so now that we've written our progress bar updating function, we can go back to the onClick handler and just simply call update progress. And we'll save. Okay, so now we've wired up the button to this onClick event handler, which we'll call the update progress function, which will take whatever the value of the progress bar is, add 10 to it, see if it's over 100, and if it is, reset it, and then put that value back into the progress bar. So let's go back to the layout. Now what we need to do is wire up the events for the rest of the controls. And just to make things easy, I'm going to have each control respond to the onClick event. 
So for the checkbox, when I select it, we'll just go over to the properties and choose on click. And I don't have to write it again. It's already written for me. And let's just take a quick look at the XAML code to see what's going on. You can see that when I set that on click handler, what happened was a click event got inserted with the name of my function. Let's go to the hyperlink button and do the same thing for click. We'll set that to on click. And for the radio buttons, we'll do the same thing. Set that one to on click as well as this one. For the toggle control, we'll do the same thing. So the list box and the slider are different cases. What we'll do for the list box is we will select the list box control, which I'll just click it in the XAML right there. List box control will just fire the event whenever the selection changes. I'll select the selection changed event here and just type in on cell change. And once again, that puts me in the code view. And just to make things simple, I'll just call update progress again. So I'll copy that and paste it. And then back to the slider. The slider control, same idea. Slider controls over here in the properties, you can see they have a value changed event. And I'll just call this one on val change. And same idea, I'll just call update progress. So quick recap, we've now wired up all of our controls to the various event handlers for them. And the event handlers basically just update the value of our progress bar. So if we go back to the layout, we'll see all of our controls are wired up. And all we need to do now is test it. And that's the subject of our next lesson.